today. Are you, are you ready to praise Jesus? All right, so it's BGMC Sunday, so we'll have our precious, precious girls come up. And I know you want to bring all your money right now and put it in the bucket, right? <laughs> So let's support missionaries around the world and missions projects by coming and donating today. And, and just join with us and let's praise Jesus.
You can be seated for an, our announcement video. Welcome to Bayou Blue Assembly. Listen closely to hear about our upcoming events. We are so excited for our upcoming Missions Popcorn Fundraiser starting this April. All through the month of April, you can find a great kit to order a bag. Join us for our BGMC Missionary Challenge. Join us for our Student Fine Arts Service Sunday night, April the 2nd, as we see how God is developing the giftings in students' lives. Who's ready to go to camp? Join us for our Kids Camp Meeting Sunday, April 2nd at 5 p.m. in the Kids Church. Secure your child's spot today for only $25. Parents of junior high and youth students, we will also be having our Student Ministries Camp Meeting Wednesday, April the 5th from 6 to 6.30. Come and get all the information you need for this year's 2023 middle school and youth camps. Join us for our Women's Breakfast at Chick-fil-A on Martin Luther this Wednesday, April 5th at 8.30. We will be having our Wednesday Night Kids kickoff on April 5th. Bring your kids to join us for Kids Life Groups where we will have an ice cream bar and other fun activities. Bring your favorite game to donate and come prepared for a night of fun. That is not exciting. That was fun. Yeah. That was fun. That was Join us this upcoming Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. for our prayer room right here in the sanctuary. I want you to understand that, man, there are things we're still working on, <laughs> like our garage. But it almost represents our lives, too. Like, there's a real part of the struggle every day to keep things going. We believe like this understanding of we're just here for this brief period of time. Because of that and because there's an eternity waiting, that should change everything about our lives. Yeah, you can have a great marriage here on earth, but then you die and here comes millions of years. And so shouldn't we invest our time here on earth and even our marriages um, on things that will matter afterwards? Who put us here and designed us and designed marriage for His glory, for His purposes? It's not about us. And so I think we just want you to pause and change your thinking a little bit rather than immediately going into, but I, but she doesn't, but he, why not say, what does God want? Let's just think about God for a minute because this is all about His glory. It's just practicing his presence. And so for us as a couple, as we make decisions, it's like, okay, really what decision will we make in light of who God is? The totality of God, his holiness and his love, his justice, his mercy, his grace, all of him, that person, he's gotta be first um, because this is somewhat temporary. Sign up by April 9th to join our marriage ministry for you and me forever. That's it, y'all. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's not forget to also do our offering. We have a box on the right and the left side and then out in the hall in the middle. Um, so today is the first Sunday of the month. So everybody, let's make sure to go eat at Cane's on Grand Caillou. So that's like the one somewhere right over here. Uh, a lot of people last week were like, oh, we went to the Cane's, but apparently wasn't the right one. Um, so a portion of the money goes to... Um, us being able to build our very own basketball court, and that's really fun. A lot of our kids and even adults like to play basketball, so I think that would be amazing. So everybody can stand up. Um, oh, yeah. Um, so after service, our youth students will be out in the lobby holding these flyers for the, uh, for the Canes 
fundraiser. Um, so make sure you grab one. Everybody can stand up, and we're going to go on into worship. Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for the amazing honor that you give us to be able to worship you freely today, Lord God. Lord, help us to remember that you are a good God and that your goodness comes running after us every, every day, Lord. Lord, help us to not forget to love you first each and every day, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. For your mercy never fails me In all my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head For I will sing Of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able For I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. For I have lived in the goodness of God. been so, so good. Every breath that I am able, for I will sing in the goodness of God. All my life, and all my life you have been faithful. my life you have been so so good with every breath that i am able for i will sing of the goodness of god your goodness is running after it's running after me this is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. In all my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able For I will sing of the goodness of God Oh, I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God For I will sing of the goodness of God. Come on, how many of you receive the identity today? Amen. to the room. 
darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring when you walk into the room every heart starts burning and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you worship you how we love you we love you and we'll never stop we can't live without you Jesus we love you we can't Isn't it all for him? When you walk into the room, sickness starts to vanish. Every hopeless situation ceases to exist. When you walk into the room, the dead begin to rise because there's resurrection life in all you do we love you and we'll never stop we can't live without you jesus we love you and we can't get Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God. All we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God.
just the mention of that name, it changes things, right? Our situations shift. Darkness flees. Sickness has to leave. You know, if you're feeling down and depressed, get up. Start speaking it. We declare miracles over your life. We can do that over ourselves and each other, right? Speak into it. Don't be silent. We speak miracles in the name of Jesus. He's still a miracle working God. Come on, show me. Don't you believe that? Tell him you're a miracle working God. You don't stop. Your miracles have continued, Lord. We believe for miracles of healing, of emotional state, of miracle provision in Jesus' name. The one who made the blind to see is moving here in front of me, moving here in front of me. The one who made the deaf to hear is silencing my every fear, silencing my every fear. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. I believe in you. I believe in you. You're the God of miracles. The one who does impossible is reaching out to make me whole, reaching out to make me whole. The one who put death in its place, his life is flowing through my veins. His life is flowing to come, the power of the risen one, the God who brings the dead to life, you're the God of miracles, the God of miracles, the God who
Now give the Lord hands up a praise. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, he is the God of miracles. Has he ever done anything for you? Give him a hand clap of praise. Glory to you, God. Glory to you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Y'all may be seated. I appreciate our worship team. They've done a phenomenal job, both services today. Uh, we are so blessed to have a, a, a great depth of uh, anointed uh, leaders. Uh, can y'all believe that next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday? Wow. We will have a sunrise service, 6 a.m. That means you got to get up a little bit ahead of that. Uh, we'll be here. It's going to be out in the parking lot. We'll set up. If you get here uh, 30 minutes early, 530, uh, we could use some help bringing chairs outside. And uh, you say, well, what if it rains? It ain't going to rain. Now stop it. <laughs> so we're going to, uh, but I mean, we. this will be my 30... First, sunrise service, I'm excited. My love will be back with me. She's coming in Tuesday night at 5 o'clock. It's been long enough. <laughs> I have to bring her to that marriage class. She stays gone too much longer. <laughs> Amen. Tonight, oh, let me tell y'all. Tonight, we're having our fine arts service. Our young people that went off to fine arts in our state, they competed. 13 of them are going to nationals. Isn't that great? The short sermon, the top three in our state, two of them were from here. There was a half a point between third place and first place. Half a point. And... The uh, one that won the state, young lady from uh, New Orleans, her mom and dad passed her there. Uh, they had to go back because her and Matthew Abair, who was the tied for first, they had to go and find fault with them because they were so they were just so good. But they're going to be here tonight. We're going to be hearing that tonight. Songs, music. 13 of our, of our young people are going to nap. I mean, it, that just is so cool to me. And you get a chance to hear them singing. They did a drama. The, I'm going to just say this. you got to pay close attention to the drama. they got so much stuff going on in it. A lot of symbolism. And if you don't pay attention, you'll miss it. And so it's, it's not for the ADD people. <laughs> Rest of it, ADD would be good, but. If you struggle with ADD, you're going to miss that. Your Romans 10, 17, if you'll turn, I know my ADD kicking in, ain't it? <laughs> Last week, we talked about faith, right? Not about, not about faith behind her back or anything, but we talked about faith. And we talked about how, how just because you didn't have issues didn't mean that, that, that you didn't have faith. See, sometimes people think, well, I don't have any, I don't have any problems at all, so I'm a great person of faith. No, you're not. You're a great person of faith when you have a lot of problems and you still serve God anyway. See, see that is the process that we have to understand is that, that having issues doesn't determine your faith. The way you walk through the issues, that's, that determines your faith. So last week we talked about this. This week I want us to talk about how do I get faith? How many of you know if you need faith to please God, you need to know how to get faith? I mean, I would think that's one of the most important things you can learn as a Christian is how do I get faith? Because I do want to please God. I want God to be happy with me, and, and I want to be able to connect to God in a deeper way. And if I have to have faith to do that, how do I get faith? Well, there's different ways to get faith, and we're going to talk about four different ways this morning. Now, my wife would tell me I can't do more than two and, get, and, and be done, but I did it in the first service. I did all four. It took me a little bit longer, but we're going to do it this service too because I'm going to quit talking. I'm going to start preaching. <laughs> Hebrews 10, 17. So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Father, touch the ear of the hearer. Let them listen to your word. Father, hold these moments in your hand. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. 
So then faith comes by hearing the word of God. So I, I want you to understand that before we got saved, before we gave our hearts to God, we didn't understand what faith was. Most of us didn't read the Bible before we got saved because we stayed as far away from God as we could. And when I grew up, we were, you know, the early, my early years, we were told that we didn't need to read the Bible. We just needed to follow the teachings of the church and we'd be okay. And so that's what my mom did. It's what we did. And we, we did our, our, you know, our, our stuff that we had to do. But we didn't understand the Bible because we didn't read the Bible. And so it, it hindered us. But, but when I became a Christian, I began to find out who I was in Christ Jesus. How do you find out who you are? You have to read about it. You have to open up the Bible and see what does God say about your situation. You see, in order for us to have faith to go through the battle, I've got to know that God's going to be in the battle with me. And I know he's in the battle with me because the Bible says he'll never leave me nor forsake me. So because I know that he doesn't leave me, then in the middle of my struggle, I don't have to wonder, is God here? I can know that he's here because God is not a man that he should lie. See, I saw that in the Bible. God doesn't lie. So if the word of God tells me that God will do something for me, it doesn't matter if I can understand how he does it. I just got to believe that he does it. So as I begin to, to follow through with this process, I began to learn who I was in Christ Jesus. I began to find out that I was more than a conqueror. So the battles that I was going through, how many of y'all have gone through a battle or two in your life? Amen. We got some battles that happen. And sometimes those battles seem like they're insurmountable. There's, I just, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried maybe it's just me but but it seemed like every time I went into the valley to fight the giant he kicked me out the valley and I didn't like that so you know what I did I stopped going in the valley <laughs> I got tired of getting whipped but then I found out as I read the Bible that God fights for me when I belong to him so, so this is a process that I began to, to, to connect myself to the Word of God. I began to take God's Word and start applying it to me and saying, well, if this is what the Bible says, then I can believe God to do this. You see, my mom and dad had, had many battles they went through. I watched them go through those battles, and I would hear my mom, she would begin to quote Scripture. Amen. They would just begin to speak scripture out over everything. And, and, and they would just pray that, that, you know, that, that in the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. It says that in the name of Jesus, demons are subject to the church. In the name of Jesus, my mom and dad began to, to pray, pray those things and write those scriptures down on the mirror. And, and they, would, they would, every time they would go to to, to, to comb their hair or brush their teeth, the first thing they would see was, was a scripture about who they were in Christ Jesus, that they were more than conquerors through Christ Jesus, that, that, that no matter how many times they messed up, that if they would come and confess their sins, that God was faithful to forgive them of their sins and to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. You see, the devil wants you to not pick up the, the Bible. He doesn't want you to read it because he knows that it's in the word of God. God that faith can be planted inside of you see the the devil comes immediately after the word goes forth Any, anybody ever sitting in church and God give you something and you know it was from God and you say inside of yourself I, that, that, that's for me that belongs to me and by the time you get to your house the devil done stole it from you I mean, he has rolled up in your car. He used somebody that sounds just like your spouse. <laughs> or one of your children to snatch that seed right out of your hand. And by the time you get home, you've already forgot about the message because now you're mad, you're screaming. Because the enemy comes in immediately to steal that word. Because he's aware that faith comes by hearing the word of God. 
And so as I apply that word into my life and as I begin to see what the Bible tells me that I can be and who I am in Christ Jesus, then my faith begins to elevate. I begin to then, as I study the Bible, I begin to realize that I'm more than I think I am. The devil wants you to believe you're nothing more than the decisions you've made in your life. But if you've made a decision for Jesus, then you're so much more than that. Because you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It's not you. It's not your perfection. It's not your power. It's not your abilities. It's in Christ Jesus. You are made righteous. And so as I learn these things, then there are choices and decisions I have to make. Right? Because I don't care how many scriptures you quote, if you're not living by them, then you don't get to walk in them. You can't just quote the good scriptures, I'm more than a conqueror, while you're living like a defeated foe. you got to make a choice to walk away from some things. Now, I know that, that, that we're not perfect people. That's why you're in the perfect place. Because no one here is perfect except under the name of Jesus. Amen. Under what he has done for us, right. we walk in perfection, not because of us. So, so if you say, well, I'm a flawed person, and if they knew that I was messed up, then, then they would think I don't belong here. You'd be wrong. I, I know the pastor of this place. And he got issues too. I don't know if y'all know that. I could tell you to ask his wife, but she ain't here. <laughs> but the truth is, is there always this struggle that, that takes place. If you're trying to be what God wants you to be, there's going to be a struggle. And I'm not talking about that you're perfect and without flaw. What I'm saying is that you're trying what you can to make the difference in your own life. That you know what? Maybe you fell down last night. Get back up today. He said, well, what if I fell again? Get back up. Keep getting up. You know, if you'll keep getting up, you'll start finding there's more victory in you than you think. There's more fight in you than you think. That, that's one of the things that the devil found out about me. I got more fight in me than he knew. He thought he could get me discouraged, but you know what? God keeps encouraging me. Even though I fall, I get up, I get back into the battle. You know why? Because I know what God said is true. I know that God's anointing and God's power is true because I've, I've got that word and I, I, I put it inside of me so that I can be what God wants me to be. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. And so you have to understand that as you read the Bible and study the Bible, that is a way that you hear from God. But more than that, you have to understand, people say, well, you know, Pastor, uh, I don't believe you can hear from God. I don't, I don't believe God talks to you. John 10, 25, Jesus answered them, I told you and you believe me not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But you believe not because you are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Mm hmm. Well, that'd been a great place for an organ, huh? You hear, God says, my sheep hear my voice. Now, I, you know what? I'm not talking about an audible voice that booms from heaven. Packy, <laughs> don't eat that second steak. <laughs> and, and stuff like that, you know? I'm not talking about that. You know, wouldn't it be nice, though, if he would do that? Just, I mean, just boom his voice out there right before you do something you know you ought not be doing. And just by the way, anybody that saw my post about the steak I ate, obviously it hadn't been cooked yet. <laughs> it was flat raw. Now, I cooked my steak medium rare. So it wasn't much more cooked than that, but it was more cooked than that. But I do, I do want to hear God. I mean, there's times when I would want God to say no, but he doesn't do that, but he does speak into my heart. But you know, the more I read the Bible, the more clear I hear his voice, because God doesn't give you a word contrary to the Bible. 
When people give you a word and you go, oh, I've never heard that before. It may not be in the Bible. You may all be careful. Someone told me one time they had a scripture, man, God gave me this verse and this verse is for me. And they started telling me what God said. I said, well, hang on, hang on. That's not what that verse is saying. Well, yeah, but God gave it to me for this. I said, no, 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 no. The Bible says that the word of God is of no private interpretation. Mm -mm. God didn't give you a special word that goes contrary to his word. It don't work that way. That's how come you can know it was God that gave it. And when someone builds an entire doctrine on one verse that has nothing to do with anything else in the Bible, it's not true. Because every doctrine in the Bible is supported by the Bible. More than just one place, it's in multiple places, that's the way it is. That's how come I know that I can overcome the enemy and I can overcome his lies, I can overcome his attack, because it's more than one place that I see the Word of God telling me that if I believe that God's going to move on my behalf, that if I trust God, he's going to come in and he's going to come in and stop the attack of hell. He didn't say I wasn't going to get attacked. He said he would stop the attack from overcoming me. And I don't know about anybody else in here, but I have had some attacks come against me. Right after I got saved, the devil opened up everything he had to destroy me. I had a lot of good friends growing up, and all of them seemed to be poor. None of them ever bought anything to drink. They all just came to my ice chest and lived out of it. But after I got saved, every one of them rascals got jobs and wanted to repay me. No, man, just come with us. We'll buy. So I don't drink anymore. Oh, come on, man. Just one ain't going to hurt you. And it probably would have been true. But I wasn't going to stop with one. We talked about that. I, I was going to go after it. You know, I was going to be an overachiever. I always felt like I needed to overachieve myself. Wasn't no one and done, nothing. And I just, I remember telling them, no, and, and I had friends of mine said, man, they quit smoking dope. And the minute they quit smoking dope, all of their dope smoking friends started showing up. And I wanted to pay them back for all the dope they got, had given them over the years. You say, well, that's just a coincidence. No, it's not. It's an attack of the enemy that's coming against you to cause you to stumble. What do you do? You begin to speak, and in the name of Jesus, I bind that up. My dad used to tell his old buddy, he said, hey, man, won't you come go? We'll do this. He said, won't y'all come go to church with me? I ain't going to church. He said, well, I ain't going back to the bar. So I guess we're done. You got to make a decision somewhere in there that I'm not going to give in because you know what? I don't know if y'all know this, but you can't drive into the deep mud and pull someone else out of the mud. Well, unless you got a, you know, the right vehicle. But generally speaking, you would want to put your, your, your tires on something that's good and solid and, and, and you can get some traction because if not, you'll wind up getting stuck too. And that's what happens to so many people in church is we get touched by God, but then we go back out there and instead of staying on solid ground, we get pulled into that muck and mire and we allow them to get us bogged back down. And then we think, well, I guess it just wasn't meant for me to get saved. And that's not true. God is not willing that any should perish. But all should come to salvation. So I know that God wants you to be saved. He wants you to walk in victory. He wants you to have a power and anointing in your life. That's what he wants. He's just waiting on you to want it back. He's waiting on you to declare, I'm not giving in to this. And to listen to that, that voice of the shepherd as he calls you. Come out of that. You say, yeah, but you don't know what I've been through, Pastor. Let me tell you something. We serve a God that restores the broken soul. He restores. I know that because he says so in his word. And that's what caused me to have faith that it doesn't matter where I came from. What matters is where I'm going from here. That's what matters, guys. It doesn't matter what used to be. You know what? Everybody in this room messed up somehow. Some of you worse than me. <laughs> Yeah, cold. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Because we have a God that forgives. Amen. When we call upon his name, he hears us. And I'm just telling y'all, God wants you to grasp that. See, I learned that you could be a prodigal. You could run away from God, but that he would still want you to come home. 
God wanted me to come home, and he let me come home. He blessed me and restored me. But I praised him for that, but I learned that through the Bible. And y'all, if, you're, if you keep saying, God, I'm just waiting on you to, to do some big thing to prove to me that this is you. You'll find yourself like Elijah in a cave in 1 Kings 19 and 11. It says, and he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountain and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a small, still voice. And he was in that small, still voice. He spoke to him out of the small, still voice. See, sometimes you got to quiet yourself in a place so that God can speak to you. Because you've been so caught up in all the noise, right? Not just, I'm not just talking about the party noise. I'm talking about that noise of, I'm no good, I can't. It's always been this way for me. Every time I turn around, I'm always failing. Everybody else gets a break. I never get a break. It seems like no matter what I do, it always turns up bad. Sometimes you got to shut up. I know that's a bad word. I'm sorry. But sometimes you got to do it. Got to stop you talking, stop you whining, stop you looking for fault. Stop trying to give God a way out. God, I don't blame you. I ain't no good. God don't need you to give him a way out. He needs you to give him a way in. That's what God wants. He wants you to stop telling him why he can't and start telling him why he will. Start throwing your hands up and surrender. How many of you know if I pull a gun and say, give me your money? You go, because you don't want me to shoot you. Well, some of y'all, some of y'all put your guns and shoot me. I mean, I'm... But, you know, surrender. Sometimes you just got to surrender to God. Quit trying to figure God out. Quit trying to figure out why. You know, I mean, I used to all the time, God, I know God, I don't blame you. I wouldn't love me either. I mean, I know what I did, and I don't blame you. But, God, if you could please help me. I know I don't deserve. I used to, I mean, I'd spend 15 minutes apologizing for even asking. I sure wasn't asking in faith. I was just kind of trying to throw something up there, you know. Hopefully, God would feel sorry for me. That if I was sorry enough, he would see it, right? God already knows if you're sorry or not. You ain't never going to fool God. And you don't have to convince him. You just have to come to him. You got to listen, amen? But you got to listen to his voice. You, you got to stop trying to, to get this rah going. You just got to say, okay, God, look. It's me. I know I, I know I messed up, God, but I really love you. And I really just want, I just want to be saved. And God, I'm going to give it my best. Your best may not be all that it should be but you know what it's your best right when I came to God my older brother was a lot better at not getting in trouble than me he Eddie was everybody's why can't you be like your brother Eddie <laughs> right all of y'all had somebody like that in your family yeah and, and, and the problem was he really was that guy he was the guy everybody in town ran to. What do you think I should do, Eddie? Nobody asked me. <laughs> of course, I was in a wreck. My life was in a wreck most of the time, but that's not the point. The point is they never tried. I could have been somebody if they let me. But they kept running to him. But you know what I found out is that I got alone somewhere, me and God, and I just poured myself out. I said, okay, God, I need help. I'm a mess. And God, I don't know what to do. But God, if you'll help me, I'll try again. I'll do my best. And you know what? One of those times, I stayed. 
One of those times I made it. Here I am now, 30 and almost 40 years. I've stayed. I've been what God called me to be. And I'm going to tell you, didn't nobody give any good odds for me to make it. (laughs) All of my friends, even the church people. Well, I wonder how long it'll last this time. Lucky if it lasts five more minutes, I don't punch you. (laughs) But y'all, it was a struggle, right? But there came a place where I did surrender it. And I let God keep it. And y'all, it wasn't instantaneous perfection. It was a process. But I, I kept getting back on the wheel. I kept getting back. Every time I'd fall off, I'd get back on. Come on, God. Work me out some more. I ain't ready. And God smashed me down, run me around, add a little bit of water to my, to my body so I wouldn't dry out. And start again. And so that's, I got I to gotta hurry. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. So some of y'all thinking, you ain't never going. I'm going to. So the next place is, is that we pray, amen, in the Holy Ghost. It says in Jude 17th verse, But beloved, remember ye the word which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that he told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves sensually, having not the Spirit, but you, beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. So praying in the Holy Ghost, building up my faith. So there's a process of building up our faith. And one of the issues that we see is being baptized in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. See, that's, that's what praying in the Holy Ghost is. Once I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit, I have a, a heavenly language that, that God gives to me that I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. And this is a process. You know why I have to pray in the Holy Ghost means I'm praying by faith. Because I don't understand what tongues is. I, I don't un- tongues is an unknown language. It is a language that God puts inside of us that is a language between us and him. And the only way to pray in the Holy Spirit, to pray in tongues, is by faith. Because you don't know what you're praying. I like to pray in my own understanding so I know what I'm asking for. I know what I want God to give me. (laughs) I know what I want God to do with this situation. But it's when I don't know. I begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I begin to pray in tongues, and the Holy Spirit begins to pray through me. Now, people say, well, yeah, but that's something that comes from you. I'll tell you, when I used to work offshore, the guys that I worked with asked me, are you Pentecostal? I said, yeah, why? Oh, because you was praying in tongues last night while we we were sleeping. I said, why y'all didn't wake me up and tell me something? I said, no, we ain't playing that. (laughs) So we figured you and God was doing something over there. We left that alone. I was, I was totally unaware that I was praying in tongues. My wife, after we first got married, said, man, you was praying in tongues all night. I said, you should have been praying in. <laughs> Something going on. I had no clue I was praying in tongues. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit has my permission that I don't hold back from God to use my body day or night. The whole, God never sleeps and never slumbers. He watches over me. God can stir in my heart. And as long as I'm a yielded vessel to God, I can pray in other tongues. And I do that. But that's how I build up my faith. When I'm not sure what I'm going through, what I'm going through, and I don't know what to say, I don't know how to ask God to do something for me. I begin to pray in other tongues. I begin to pray and, and I pray and I pray. And I don't know what I'm praying because I don't speak the language of the prayer language that God has given me, but I pray it anyway, and I release that. And every word I release to God is done by faith. And the more I do that by faith, the more my faith begins to build up inside of me because God is stirring in me. How many of y'all know the more God stirs in you, the more God can stir in you? You know, it's, it's, it's like going to the gym to work out. The first time you go, you don't say, okay, well, that's all I could do, so that's all I can do. You, you go back and do more, don't you? 
you go back and, and, you, and you practice pushing more weight and lifting this and doing that and different exercises. And the more you work at it, the stronger you become. It's the same way when I begin to exercise the spirit inside of me and I begin to trust God as I'm releasing that, then the power of God is building up inside of me my expectation of faith because I believe that God can. Now, there are those that don't want us to accept the power of the Holy Spirit but the evidence of speaking in other tongues. And the number one uh, enemy to that is the devil. The devil doesn't want us to believe in that. He wants us to believe that it passed away, but we see it in the Word of God. We see in the Bible, in the upper room, the 120 were baptized with the Holy Spirit and all began to speak in tongues. We see the Gentiles, when they received the Holy Spirit, they began to pray in other tongues. We see the laying on of hands that God gave them the, the tongues and, 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 and this prayer language we see here in Jude where he says you need to build up your faith praying in the Holy Ghost. Why do we believe that there is no power, there is no anointing, there is no baptism because it passed away? When did it pass away? and why didn't somebody tell me? When my dad got saved, we never saw a church person at my house until my dad got saved. And after he got saved, we had one church showed up and tell him he's speaking in tongues. It was the devil. He couldn't be real. He told him, said, you're a week too late for that. If you'd have been here a week before, I might not have known, but I know what I have is real. It's, it's, it's real. This is God. Week after that, they had another group showed up that was Pentecostal that said, did you do it in Jesus' name? He said, no, he said, it ain't real. He said, you, you two weeks too late. I know what I have is real because I, I, I know what I was and I know what I am. And I know that what I have right now is God because only God could have done this to me. Even had well-meaning family come in and say, you know, Pat, you, you, you made a mistake. The Bible says to forbid to speak in tongues. And Daddy said, would you show me where it says that? He said, well, certainly. Opened his Bible up into 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, and started going through this. He said, right here, and forbid to speak in tongues. He said, read that again. But this time, read it one word at a time. And forbid not to speak in tongues. Daddy said, where did that not come from? He said, I don't know. He said, okay, so it's in the Bible. You want it? Let me pray, Pat. Suddenly it began, it's not that it's not in the Bible. It's not that they're not seeking that. Why? Because the devil wants to take away. Because there's an anointing in that that helps you build up your holy faith. It helps you to build up your faith. So when the enemy comes in like a flood to destroy you, there's a faith that builds up inside of you that you say no. But in the name of Jesus, I will not let this happen to me. And the power of God's released because your faith is elevated to a higher level. Not only did I hear the Bible, but I begin to put that Bible into effect in my life. And I pray about that because the devil wants to steal that. But the anointing of God, as I'm building up my holy faith, cannot take that from me. And so I, I am loose to, to pray in the Spirit as my faith's being built up. As I begin to, to loose myself into areas where I'm saying, okay, God, I don't know how I'm going to handle this, but I know this, I'm putting it in your hands. Because I have faith, I believe God can handle it. So I begin to pray, and I pray in the Holy Spirit. And when the enemy attacks me, and I don't, I just begin to pray in the Spirit. When, when I get up in the morning, middle of the night, and I, I suddenly feel a, 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 an urgency inside of me, and I don't know how to pray, I begin to pray in the Spirit. And I pray in the Spirit until I feel a release in my heart to go back to bed. And, and I know that, that if you've never experienced that, it seems strange to you. But I'm telling you right now that the power of the Holy Spirit is real. And it is a power that builds up inside of us this, this ability to have a holy faith, believing God for supernatural things. And then after that, we, we have that Faith also comes by experience, right? In Romans 5, 1 through 5, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, 
by whom also we have access by faith unto this grace wherein we stand and rejoicing in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulations works patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Wow. So then my experiences are a way that God allows my faith to grow. See, why do we always get mad and curse and get angry? Because we're going through the battle. We're, we're going through the valley of the shadow of death. And, and God, where are you at? Why are you letting me go through this? And I believe that God wants you to understand that you need to walk. If God was God before it started, he is God in the middle of it. And if he's not God in the middle of it, he really wasn't your God in the start of it. Good place for an organ, by the way. You got to understand that, that, that the enemy brings bad stuff against you. Because he wants to make you stumble. But you hold yourself on what you know is true. What does God say about it? What does the word say about it? See, I find my faith in what the Bible says. I've got all this fear coming at me. I'm just afraid that things ain't going to be what I want them to be. And, and, and I'm afraid of failing. And I'm afraid of what people will say. And, and I'm afraid of being rejected. And I'm afraid of one thing or another. Okay, well, what does the Bible say about your fear? It says, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So that means that fear don't belong to me. That means that God has told me that he's given me a sound mind to deal with this and not to allow fear to get a hold of my heart. So, so now I have the word which I build faith upon. Fear starts rising up. What do I do? I begin to pray in the spirit, building up my most holy faith. I'm praying against this fear getting into my life. I'm praying, God, not my will, but thy will be done. God, you do in me what you want to do. And so I'm building up my most holy faith. And the experience of the last battle I made it through is what's given me the strength to go through today's battle. Because if God got me through yesterday, he can get me through today. And if he gets me through today, he'll get me through tomorrow. Come on, somebody. God is capable. But we got to trust him. We got to go through the experience. You can't quit on God every time it gets bad and then wonder why you don't have faith to get through the next battle. You got to make a decision. Either God's God or He's not. Your failure to trust Him doesn't diminish God. So don't think that, well, God can't handle me. God can handle you. You just need to trust God. And I know it's difficult. I, I say that like it's, boo. But you know, I know what it is to get in the middle of the battle and not be able to see. Can't see. I mean, I'd like to walk somewhere. I'd like to find a direction to go, God, but I can't see which way to go. Anybody ever been there? It's just so dark in your life, you just don't know what to do. Well, it's in those moments that I pray. I just pray. God, I don't know what to do, so I'm just going to pray. I'm going to talk to you, God. I'm going to tell you how much I love you, Jesus. That's what I'm going to do. That's all I, that's, that's all I know how to do. Sometimes you just need to let God know how much you love him. Just keep telling him, God, I love you. God, I love you. God, I love you. The devil says, won't you just give in to your sin? God, I love you. I'll just get God, I love you. Somebody else, somebody else, why do you keep saying, God, I love you? Because I love God. And I don't know what nothing else to say. God, I love you. Eventually, the devil's going to say, will you quit saying that? And you say, no. God, I love you. God, I love you. God, I love you. Until you come up with something else you can say. Don't say, okay, I quit. Eh, wrong answer every time. God, I love you. God, I love you. I'm going to get through this battle because, God, I love you. And you know what I know about, about God? He loves me too. He said so in his Bible. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. God ain't trying to mess you up. He's trying to get you up. 
He's not trying to cause you to stumble. He's trying to cause you to gain your, your balance. Sometimes you get hit just right, you'll lose your balance on Trey. I, I remember watching Trey. Trey is a sucker for an uppercut, y'all. He was five or six years old. I got him with one. He was boxing this guy, I think it got in New Orleans. And they were doing real good. And then the guy throws an uppercut. By the time he throws that uppercut, Trey went. Oh, he hit that boy. Oh, it made, made his daddy hurt. And he stumbled and he fell backwards. I thought, oh my goodness, I've hit that boy harder than that. <laughs> he got up, shook his head, settled himself, and they went at it. And if it hadn't been for the knockdown, he'd have won the fight. And if they had gone another round, he'd have won the fight. But you know what? He got a little staggered. But you know what happened? He decided that he, he, he allowed his training. I know this is going to pass. You know, he. He shook himself. He knew that he just needed to get his balance a little bit. And his equilibrium came back, and he was ready. A lot of times, y'all need to do that. Spiritually speaking, the devil gets you with a sucker punch, and you kind of stumble back. Don't quit because it hurt. It hurts to get punched in the face. Right? Some of you people have never been punched in the face. Some of y'all been punched in the face. It hurts, don't it? Yeah, thank y'all. It hurts, but you ain't got to quit because it hurts. Get mad, but get mad at the devil. You get mad at the one through the punch, not the people trying to hold your balance. We in the church, we tend to want to hit everybody around us. Devil punch you, and you want to punch somebody else. Fight the devil. <laughs> Don't fight your brothers and sisters trying to get you off the ground. Go after the enemy, but, but sometimes you got to settle yourself. you got to make a decision. I've already got some experience in this. You know, that's why you go, you practice sparring so that it, you get to the ring. It's not the first time you've ever been punched in the face. Because, you know, the, that first couple of times you get your bell rung, you think, whoo, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. But when you're fighting your friends, you can't quit, can you, Ken? No. Ken said, he throws some punches. I'm hit. Matter of fact, I think you, you or Trey had to take each other's spot one time. You know, I had to go to work. Crazy bunch of people. But, but they, they knew. So the first time wasn't in the main battle. It was getting ready for the battle. They got punched in the face a couple of times. Trey come home with a black eye. He'd been practicing. I told him, tell whoever would give him the black eye, thank you from his daddy. I couldn't hit him because he fights too good now. But, but the thing is, it was in that process. You know, you're in this process, and, and you might get hit. The devil may get in a lucky shot on you. Maybe he'll shock you because something happens in your life, and you can't deal with it. Right? Sometimes things happen to us, and it's beyond our ability to deal with. That's that shock punch that the enemy throws. Don't panic. Take a step back. Clear your head a little bit, see what's going on, and then step back. That's what we do as Christians. Sometimes you need to step back and pray. But then there's that step back forward. There's a time when you got to stop stepping back and you got to start going back forward. And that's what experience teaches us, right? Experience teaches me that if I'll balance myself, my equilibrium will come back and I'm ready to go back after the devil. But if, if you quit every time it gets rough, You'll never, you'll never learn to stand in the fight. But experience gives you hope for the next battle, right? Last thing you can come up, uh, Micah. I just want y'all to be sure y'all see my wife next week. Four points. Y'all tell her. Here's the easiest way to get your faith increased. Mark 9, 23. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. Sometimes you just need to ask God to give you more faith. <laughs> and it's okay. God, you know, how many of y'all God doesn't get mad at you because you're having weak faith today? He, he loves you. He doesn't want, but it's his good pleasure to give good gifts to you. But if you're not asking him 
to increase your faith. Instead, you just quit. Who's that on? You say, well, God should have given it to me. You should have asked. I'll never forget. Now, I can be a smart aleck. Thank you. And I was sitting there on my day off watching my TV, and my wife walks by and looks at me sitting there and just keeps walking. I'm watching my show. She walks back by and she gives that look. She walks by. Well, I know something's coming. I don't know what it is yet, but I know something's coming. And finally, she walks in there and says, puts them little hips on, hands on her hips and starts popping that little toe. That means she's mad, by the way. She said, can't you help me? I said, what you need help with? Well, can't you see this room needs to be vacuumed? I said, nope. I do not see that. I don't see clothes on the floor, dishes in the sink. It's my superpower. <laughs> Walk right by that stuff, never notice it. <laughs> my boys inherited their daddy's superpower. She said, well, you can help me and vacuum this room. I said, okay. I got up, she went about her business, and I vacuumed. I picked the end of the couch up off the ground, vacuumed underneath it. Hadn't been done in a while, I'm going to tell you. I cleaned the whole room pretty quick. Got the vacuum, put it back up. She come in there. She said, you already did this whole room? I said, yep. She said, why didn't you just do it? I said, you didn't ask. She said, why should I have to ask? You should just know. Right, ladies? You know what I told her? I said, uh, I mowed the yard yesterday. You didn't help me do any of it. And she messed up. She said, you didn't ask. <laughs> Bam! That's right, I didn't. But if I had to ask you to help, she said, that's right. I said, you asked and I helped. I said, if you want me to help, you ask me. I don't see stuff. She says, what do you think? About what? My hair. I like it. I changed it. I said, it looks good. I don't know what it looked like before, but I liked it. <laughs> Obviously. But it's not, it wasn't my fault. She, I didn't know she needed help. I thought she had it under control. And any more than she looked outside and I'm dying trying to push the thing up the bayou. And I could have used somebody up there with a rope to pull that lawnmower because it's hard. But I didn't call her. I did it. I'm the man. It's my job. I did it. I ain't complaining. You know, I didn't go inside afterwards and say, you, you let me push that whole yard. I didn't say a word. I just I did my job. And I told her, I said, if you need me to help, all you got to do is ask. You know what she had the nerve to do? She wrote me a list of stuff and she put on my coffee pot for every one of my days off. That's stuff I need help with. Thank you. <laughs> that girl learned quick. But how many of y'all know you... You sit there and whine because God didn't do something, but you didn't ask. You didn't call out on God and ask him to show up and help you. Why are you mad at God? Because he didn't. He should have known. He did. But he was waiting on you to ask. He says, if we ask anything, in his, he didn't say, if you think. He didn't say, if I can find something to do for you, I'll do it so that you ain't got to ask. Now, he wants you to ask him. Why? Because it builds up that faith in you that I know I asked God and he did it when you throw a wild prayer up there God just do something and something happens you say okay see God you did something thank you but when you pray God touch this and that is touched something happens to your faith on the inside because specifically you asked and specifically God met you faith Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by praying in the Holy Ghost. Faith comes from experience. And faith comes from asking. Many of us walk without faith because we don't read our Bible. 
We don't seek the baptism and more of God. We never make it through a battle. And we never ask God to touch us. But then we walk defeated. And some of us even upset with God. Because God, why did you let that happen to me? God, why didn't you do this? When we've never took the time to, in faith, pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're on my prayer team, would you make your way to the front, please? We're going to uh, open up time for people to pray if they want to. But, but right now, every head's bowed, every eye's closed. If you'd say to me, Pastor, I'm struggling because I haven't been reading my Bible like I should. And because of that, I know my faith is weak. Or maybe you can say, I, I, I've never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and, and, and I know that that's something that I need to start seeking, and I want that. Or maybe you'll say, every time I go through a battle, I quit, and I'm tired, and I want to build that experience. Or maybe you just say, I just need to ask God to give me faith. If you're in that category anywhere, I want you to slip your hand up and say, Pastor, just pray for me. I see the hands all over the building. Amen. Stand to your feet. I'm going to pray. And if you want to come and you want someone to agree with you in any area, we're going to open the altars up. But let's pray now. Father, you saw each hand that was raised. And God, you know where we are and what we are and what we need. Father, I ask that you would touch each heart that is here. Let us build up our faith, God, in your word, in our prayers, in our experiences, and in our asking. That, God, we would be the people of faith that you have called us to be. I thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. If you want us to pray, y'all come. We'll pray.